Hello, I am Dr. Brich Mohan from Kanpur, consultant diabetologist and internal medicine specialist practicing in my own hospital, Kanpur. We all know that type 2 diabetes is spreading like fire, especially in Southeast Asia. And COVID and diabetes are the twin pandemic or epidemics we are facing right now. Type 2 diabetes management has seen sea change during last five to seven years. Guidelines have also evolved based on recent cardiovascular outcome trials data just to have a better understanding of what are the guidelines right now. Here I am presenting a clinical case, Mr. AB, a 50-year-old male with a history of type 2 diabetes for last three years. He is obese, hypertensive, has got dyslipidemia and obstructive sleep apnea. On physical examination, his BMI is 32 kg meter square, blood pressure is 130 by 82, of course on medicines, and heart rate is 60 beats per minute. I'll tell you what medications he is right now taking. He is currently on metformin, 1000 milligram twice a day. Lisinopril, 40 milligram once a day. Metoprolol, extended release, 100 milligram once a day. Atorvastatin, 40 milligram once a day. And aspirin, 81 milligram once a day. With all these medications, his laboratory values, measurements, at present are his blood sugar is not controlled, HbA1c of 8.3%, fairly good renal reserve, his eGFR is 70 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square, LDL is 69, HDL is 35, and triglyceride is 250 milligram per DL. His liver enzymes, AST and ALT, are mildly elevated, 70 and 100 respectively. So what is his profile right now? He has got a shorter duration of diabetes. He is relatively young. There are no major complications as of now. Keeping all this in mind, he would benefit from stringent HbA1c goal. We must remember that he is obese, hypertensive, dyslipidemic with obstructive sleep apnea. So what ADA recommends, the HbA1c goal of less than 7% in most of the non-pregnant adults. So what considerations we should take into account while determining his pharmacotherapy? 2022 recommendations say we need to look at heart failure, ASCVD risk, CKD risk, risk of hypoglycemia, weight gain or weight loss, and of course, cost. As we talk to Mr. AB, he is willing to start another medication. He is currently on metformin one gram twice a day, but he is concerned because sometimes he forgets to take his pills and he has got fears that additional pill is going to make the things worse. He stayed forward in telling us that he does not want an injectable therapy. We know that he is unlikely to achieve the target of less than seven with any single agent. A fixed dose combination may improve adherence also by once daily dosing of one pill only. Less complex treatment will require fewer pills and there will be better side effect profile and better adherence for this patient. We know that type 2 diabetics have multiple comorbidities. Hypertension is quite common. Cardiovascular disease are quite common, especially in obese individuals. And there are around one third of patients who do not know that they have got cardiovascular disease also. Current ADA ESD guidelines emphasize the importance of individualizing the treatment and they also encourage early adoption of combination therapy as and one needed. The guidelines say in high-risk individual with type 2 diabetes, we need to treat with GLP-1 receptor agonist or HCLT2 inhibitors to reduce the risk of CKD, cardiovascular death, hospitalization because of heart failure, or MACE, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. We must consider these factors 
independent of baseline hb now given this patient ab which we have been discussing a combination of clt2 inhibitor and dpp4 inhibitor like empagliflozin and lenalidocaine will be ideal choice hlt2 inhibitors everybody knows is a class of oral glucose lowering agents they basically act by increasing glucose excretion in urine by inhibiting sodium glucose transporter 2 in the proximal tubule of the kidney this effect of lowering glucose is independent of insulin secretion and they can be used at any stage of disease course 2015 was the year when empareg outcome trial with empagliflozin was presented at east and i was fortunate to be present in that hall and for the first time they reported that three point mace with empagliflozin gave a significantly lower percentage the hazard ratio of 0.86 in empagliflozin as compared to placebo on the top of standard care this was a landmark trial which changed the way we treat type 2 diabetes coming to lenalidocaine a dpp4 inhibitor which exerts glucose lowering effect by elevation of incretin hormone and there is augmentation of glucose dependent insulin secretion glucose dependent means there is less possibility or no possibility of hypoglycemia it has got proven cv safety which was proved in carmelina and carolina trial also so a combination of lenalidocaine which is a dpp4 enzyme and empagliflozin has potential to show additive glycemic control because of their complementary effects and is going to be useful in this patient we know that hba1c reduction with empagliflozin and lenalidocaine has re- reduced hba1c by 1.8% with the baseline of more than 8.5 at 24 week the benefit of this glycemic control was maintained at 52 week and higher percentage of patients achieved hba1c less than 7 for a fixed dose combination of empa plus lena this fixed dose combination offers a suitable component in strategy to achieve target hba1c that too without increased risk of hypoglycemia with weight loss because of empagliflozin with improvement in lipid profile we know that a combination of hlt2 inhibitors plus dpp4 inhibitors reduces the incidence of genital infection which can be seen with a low hlt2 inhibitor perhaps because of better glucose control other possible mechanism of this reduced incidence of genital infection is not clear at this point of time so combination of empagliflozin and lenalidocaine provides robust hba1c reduction two to four times higher possibility of patient achieving goal of hba1c less than 7 as compared to individual agent given separate with low hypoglycemic risk this patient was offered a fixed dose combination of empagliflozin 25 and lenalidocaine 5 he responded well to it his hba1c came down to 7.2 after 3 months and after 6 months it was 6.9 which is the right way of treating these patients so i hope this case will help you in understanding which drug to use when to use in accordance with recent ada est guidelines thank you very much for your patient listening